Hey guys, welcome to Tech Notebook. This is the fifth and final tutorial in the Django Meeting Link Organizer tutorial series. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, I will link a playlist containing all the videos in this series in the iCard above. So in this tutorial, we will be creating the views functions that present the HTML files to the user, and I will be demoing the final product. So let's get started. Okay, so now to get started, we need to open up this views.py file. So inside views.py, as I mentioned before, we will be creating the functions that present the HTML files to the user. So this will be our um, base.html, link to click.html, and no meetings.html. So in our uh, urls.py, we called the views current underscore meeting function uh, when we wanted when we went to the uh, empty path. So we're actually going to create this current underscore meeting function. So the way we do that is by typing in def current underscore meeting. And this will take in the parameter of uh, request. So when we uh, pass in this function into uh, urls.py, URLs.py will automatically pass in request into current meeting. So now we just need to add a colon. So before we can actually start writing our code, we need to import a few modules. The first module we will need to import is date time. And the way we do that is by uh, typing in from date time, import date time. So this uh, date time module is used to tell the Django engine when to present the meeting link to us. So now that we've imported date time, we would need to import the models from uh, models.py so we can actually access them inside views.py. The way we do that is by typing in from dot models import link. And we've imported the link model as well. So now we can actually start writing our code inside the current meeting function. So remember, this function only gets run when the user goes to a certain uh, URL. And so therefore, we only need to pull the time once throughout the function. So we'll pull the time at the beginning of the function. So we'll just type in current underscore time equals daytime dot now. And this datetime.now function will actually return a datetime object that contains the current time. So the next thing we need to do is to actually get a list of all our meetings. So that way our um, current meeting function can sort through all of the meetings and check which one is at the current time and day. So we'll have a meeting list, so meeting underscore list equals, and now we need to actually access the database that contains all of our link objects. And the way we do that is by typing in list. So we want this to be inside a list. And then in here, we need to type in link dot objects dot all. We need to open parentheses and close parentheses here. So now this object dot all function will pass all the link objects to this list function, which will convert it into a Python list. In order to make it easier for us to work with time inside our for loop, we need to create a function that actually uh, turns the time in hours and minutes to just minutes. And this function just does that for us. So you will just need to add this line, uh, def time underscore in underscore mins. And then in here, in parentheses, you'll need to pass in hour and minutes and you will return hour times 60 plus minutes. And we will need to create another variable called current class. Hello, editor me here. You'll need to call this variable current underscore meeting instead of current underscore class. I just made a mistake while recording this tutorial, which I will explain to you in a little bit. So current underscore class equals, and we'll set this to none for now. 
Okay, so now we can actually start working on our uh, for loop. So we need to just type in for meeting in meeting underscore list. And this will just cycle through all the actual meeting object inside this meeting list. We will need to get the start time in hours and minutes, as well as the end time in hours and minutes. Inside models.py, we see that start time is equal to models.time field. So start time actually stores its times in uh, daytime objects. So we'll need to use uh, daytime's functions to actually uh, get the hours and minutes. So the way we get our start times hour is by typing in start underscore time underscore hour equals meeting dot start underscore time, which is the model field, dot hour, like that. And we can actually access the start time hour. And we will just copy this again, and we'll change this to a minute, and we'll change this as well to a minute. So now we just need to copy these two lines for the end time as well, because it's basically the same. We just need to change these to end time. And I'm using the multi-cursor mode in VS Code. Um, for me, it uh, the way you do it is just by holding control, but I will actually add the default shortcut right up here if you want to see it. So I'm just using uh, my multi-cursor and I'm just gonna delete start and change that to end. So this just makes it easier uh, for me since I don't need to type out start or end in all four of these places. So now we need to obtain the current hour and minute and we will do this up here. So we will uh, add this right here. So current underscore hour equals current underscore time dot hour. And I'll just add a comment here. So if it was, uh, say, 3 o'clock p.m., uh, this function, uh, or uh, the current hour would be equal to uh, 15. And now we need to do the current minute. So current underscore min equals current underscore time dot minute. And again, if this was three o'clock p.m., uh, current minute would be equal to zero. So that's just how these two uh, functions work, current time dot hour and current time dot minute. So we can go back down into uh, this for loop. So now we are gonna continue pulling attributes out of this function. So we will uh, create another list. We'll call this day underscore list. And this list will basically contain a string that has all of the days that uh, this meeting is on. So say it, this meeting was on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it would say Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday inside this list. So now we need to add this line. If meeting.monday equals true, since in our model fields, we see that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are all Boolean fields. So if uh, that variable is true, we will append Monday to this list. And basically append is a function that actually adds this string to the list. So we can actually uh, copy this line and paste it in five times. Make sure the indentation is the same. There we go. Now it's on there five times. Now we can uh, change this to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we do the same for this, Tuesday, 
and Friday. And make sure that the first letter of each of these uh, strings is a capital letter and the first letter of these attributes are all lowercase letters. So that way we won't get any errors in the future. So just make sure to double check that. So right now I'm going to paste in this line of code. And this is from my example code that I'm using for this tutorial, since it would be really hard to memorize all these lines. So I'm just going to explain to you what this code actually does. So the first condition checks if the meeting is not on the current day. This strf time function returns a string value containing the current day, and if this day is not in the days list, the statement evaluates true. The next function checks if the time is more than five minutes before the start of the meeting. If so, this condition will evaluate to true. And finally, this last condition checks if uh, the time has passed the end time of the meeting, and if so, this condition will also evaluate to true. If any of these uh, conditions evaluate to true, then the for loop advances to the next object and does not select this as the final object. So this continue statement will tell the for loop to ignore everything that comes after this line inside the for loop, and it will just tell the for loop to go on and proceed to the next iteration. So if this statement does not evaluate to a true, this continue statement will not be called and it will go to the next line, which will say a current meeting equals meeting. And this current meeting will be the object that we actually serve to the user in the HTML page. So now we can actually exit this for loop. So now we need to create an if statement to check if current underscore meeting still equals none or if it has a meeting. So if current underscore meeting equals a none, we will actually need to render out an HTML page to the user. And the way we render a page inside our views.py is by using this render function all the way at the top. You see, this function was automatically imported into views.py. So we'll need to uh, return render. Inside render, the first thing we need to do is pass in the request. And the second thing we need to do is to actually pass in the name of the file, which would be no meeting dot html and that's all we need to do for this if statement for the second if statement this will be true if current underscore meeting actually has a value so we'll just make an else statement and we will need to render link to click .html. but you may be wondering how does link to click .html actually know what uh, the meeting object is and to do that, we will actually pass in uh, values. So I will show you how this works in a bit. So we need to type in return, render request, comma, link to click dot HTML. And now we need to add a comma and we need to actually add a context dictionary. So if we go into link to click.html, we see that there are variable tags that say obj.meeting name. So we need to actually pass in a value to obj. So we'll go back into views.py, we'll make a dictionary, and we'll have the key of the dictionary, we'll name it obj. And as a value, we will pass in current underscore meeting. So we noticed in the last tutorial that these values were all model fields. Go back into models.py, you can see that. So uh, we see that there is meeting name, meeting link, and all that inside link to click.html. OBJ is equal to the current meeting. And so this is our context dictionary. So this is all the data that we need to pass into the 
uh, HTML file. So now that you've done that, we have actually written all the code for our uh, Django project. And so the next thing I'll be doing is I will be demoing the project and we will be going through and checking for any bugs. So let's do that right now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to open up the VS Code terminal. And we have that up right now. And now we need to actually uh, go to the root directory of our project, which would be SRC. So we need to uh, type in uh, CD SRC. Now we need to type in python manage.py run server. Hit enter. And now we're running this uh, server. And if you don't see any errors right here, that means that your code doesn't have any uh, syntax errors in it. So at least we're good there. So now we need to open up our browser and we can uh, just type in uh, localhost port 8000 and we can uh, look at it and check what the error is. So as I said, there could be a few errors if I made a few typos. As you can see here, I spelled Thursday wrong. So let me just fix that. We just add the S there. And we can run that again. So let's refresh this page. And currently we are on our uh, main page. So currently I don't have any meetings. So it says no meetings. And there is a button that allows you to go home and create a new meeting. And it presents us with the Zoom login. So this is the page that we created in the last tutorial. So now we need to just go to the slash admin page. Now we'll enter our username and password, which is just A and A, like we had before. And we can go into our links and we can create another meeting. We'll click add link. And now we will create a new uh, meeting. So let's just call this uh, Django tutorial. We will have the meeting link uh, be, let's say, zoom.com slash, I don't know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I know this is not a real link, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And now we can enter in our start time. We'll have it start at 6 p.m. And we will have it end at, say, uh, say 11 p.m. So we'll type in 23 colon zero zero colon zero zero again. And we'll have this meeting be on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. We'll click save. And now we have this new meeting here that's called Django Tutorial. We'll click view site. So now we can see that since the time is 9.23 p.m. when I'm recording this tutorial, that is between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. So that means this meeting is active and it ha gives me a link to join this Django tutorial meeting. You just click it and it will actually take us to the actual meeting website. So this is not an actual URL for a meeting, but you know, you could replace that with the actual meeting URL that you're using. Okay, so if this works for you, you've successfully completed this tutorial and this is the end of the Django meeting link organizer tutorial series. I hope you like doing this project with me as I really enjoy doing this project. And if you have any questions or if you encounter any bugs throughout this code, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And you can also check out the GitHub link that I have in the description if any of your code doesn't work. And with that said, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.